Well, the federal government's cosy relationship with Qantas has come under more scrutiny today as the Prime Minister distanced himself from the decision to deny Qatar Airways 28 extra flights into Australia. Anthony Albanese told The Australian today that it was not up to him to make the decision and it was instead up to the Transport Minister, Catherine King. There are decisions like this all the time, Mr Albanese said. I can state... There is nothing unusual about this. Now, we might be right from the point of view of precedent, but there's nothing unusual about the Transport Minister making decisions about what airlines are allowed in and out of the country. We get that. But it's completely ignorant of the power and status that Qantas wields in the government and federal politics at large, which ought to make these decisions worthy of a little more scrutiny. In light of the decision to knock back Qatar, former Federal Treasurer Peter Costello today described Qantas as one of the most powerful operators in Canberra. Mr Costello is these days the chairman of the Future Fund and told a briefing this morning, quote, Qantas has a very strong brand and puts a lot of effort into advertising and lobbying. And I would say as a company, it is one of the most powerful players in Canberra. It's hard to fathom why the government would not allow more flights into Australia at a time when fares are so high and volumes are still down on pre-COVID levels. And, of course, by not allowing further international flights into Australia, you'll have less competition, you'll have higher fares, you'll have higher inflation. The suggestion that the government somehow had a responsibility to protect Qantas's profit, I just can't understand. The government is not there to protect anybody's profit. And the voices of confusion continue to grow. ANZ boss Shane Elliott told the QUT Business Leaders Forum in Brisbane yesterday that the federal government was protecting Qantas and that was, quote, really disturbing. And I don't understand why one company is given that support. This is a privately held, private enterprise company. And the government has admitted that is exactly what it's doing. This was Assistant Treasurer Stephen Jones on Monday. We can drive prices down, but if we drive them down to a level where it's actually unsustainable to run an airline, instead of having uh, two carriers, um, uh, we'll design our markets in a way which will make it unsustainable. Now, since when was it the job of the federal government to ensure any business turned a profit? How about the more than 2,000 builders that went into liquidation last financial year? Where was their guaranteed profit? How about all the small business owners who are currently battling high interest rates caused by inflation that the federal government has been unwilling to suppress and could have suppressed in a small way? by creating more competition in the airline market, these people are putting their wages, uh, putting the staff wages before theirs. I mean, where's their protection? Given what Mr Costello said today, that Qantas is one of the most powerful players in Canberra, there has to be further scrutiny of the way airlines are regulated and their closeness to the government. The Australian revealed today that other senior members of the government were not consulted on the decision to knock back Qatar's request. Why? I mean, when you're dealing with a request from a foreign company that could have an effect on the market, and airfares, of course, wouldn't you talk to the foreign minister, the treasurer, the home affairs minister, the trade minister, perhaps? But instead, Ms King said she made the decision in the national interest. Even Assistant Minister for Competition Andrew Lee has admitted that national interest is a made-up phrase. National interest is one of those terms which is typically not defined in legislation. It allows the decision maker to take uh, a broad view right, right, across the, uh, right across the economy and across society. In other words, it's rubbery and open to interpretation. On the basis of what Mr Jones said on Monday, you'd have to think the government's interpretation of natural interest is cocooning an Australian company that's just turned a record profit of $1.7 billion after tax at the expense of the Australian people. Now, sure, it's in the country's interest to have more than one airline operating in Australia, but at what point did that become more about protecting the company instead of the consumer? 
no one is suggesting that you should just open the floodgates and let any Tom, Dick or Harry who can rub a few cents together and buy a 747 to fly people around for 10 bucks a pop without kind of any quality control. We're talking about fostering a competitive market that allows as many operators as possible to deliver a decent service. Former Australian Competition and Consumer Commission Chairman Rod Sims said this morning that knocking back Qatar's request was anti-competitive. I think it does hurt competition. No doubt airfares would come down. We haven't really had a good explanation in relation to the whole Qatar issue, and that's unfortunate. I mean, when you are taking actions with which have the effect, because there's no doubt they do, of decreasing competition and uh, maintaining higher airfares, you need really clear explanations. Mr Sims and Grattan Institute Chief Danielle Wood have now been charged with leading a two-year review of competition policy, but the federal government has now carved out aviation from the review. Mr Sims said the first he knew of that was when he read it on the front page of the Financial Review. I mean, how could this happen in a serious government? Another former ACCC chairman, Alan Fells, wrote in the Sydney Morning Herald today that blocking Qatar appears to prioritise the profits of a private company over cost to consumers. While many national airlines receive protection from their governments at a time when most Australians are struggling to pay their bills, government intervention to protect a company that made a $2.5 billion profit to July does not appear to be in the interests of the people it's supposed to represent. Mr Fells believes that the government's decision should be publicly examined by an independent outfit like the ACCC and possibly assisted by the International Airline Services Commission. Australia needs a national airline, there's no doubt about that, and it needs to be profitable, just like any other business, but when you post a record profit on the back of skyrocketing airfares, it's hard to argue to consumers that you need more protection. The government rightly provides some level of protection, it's a regulated market for a reason, but quid pro quo is that we as consumers expect from Qantas that for providing that protection, they won't abuse it and gouge us. You'd think the government would be of a similar mind, but when you consider that Qantas is one of the most powerful players in Canberra, you have to ask whose back is being scratched and why. The national carrier has essentially been underwritten by the federal government, so it knows it'll never fall over, which has given it licence to behave however it likes. That's when the government is meant to step in. But as we know, they've done the opposite. Why? Data from the Department of Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development and the Arts earlier this year found Qantas had the second highest rate of flight cancellations, behind, of course, only Jetstar, which is also owned by Qantas. Airports are now accusing Qantas of deliberately cancelling flights to hog gates at airports so other airlines can't use them. It's the most complained about company to the ACCC for the second year running. And don't forget that Virgin Australia was given just $160 million in subsidies during COVID to keep a small number of routes open. When it went into administration, it was bailed out by an American investment firm, not propped up by the federal government like Qantas was during the pandemic, to the tune of $2.35 billion. Now, I extended an invitation to Qantas boss Alan Joyce to come on this program and explain things tonight from his point of view, but he refused the opportunity. Fundamentally, though, Australian consumers deserve to know from Catherine King how it was at all in the national interest to restrict more competition in the market. To this point, she's refused to answer that question. As Mr Sims noted this morning, the interests of the consumer have been forgotten. What you do know is that with more capacity, more people will be able to fly when they want to fly because there'll just be more planes available. The planes won't be, won't be full. And, of course, that means airfares will come down. The whole airline rights uh, regime is focused on uh, helping your, your country's airline um, and making sure that it gets something when you give something to another country's airline and unfortunately, the interests of consumers gets lost in that equation. So 
I think we are stuck in the past. I think we need to relook at the regime and make sure that it has the interests of consumers at heart and also the interests of competition, which in my view, of course, are one and the same thing.